everyone on Instagram Live and those of you here and wherever you are, um, I'm going to read the next couple chapters of Middle School Master of Disasters. Um, if you were with me last Friday, um, the two little guys, Michael and David, um, make the trek all the way to New York City for Comic-Con and then realize that they're too late and they've missed the event. Um, but they end up getting to give a speech to this crowd of one little boy who is their hugest fan. So um, that happens in the last the two chapters ago. And then the last chapter is where um, the kids from Washington, D.C. have finally got the permit and they jump on the train and they go the wrong direction. So they've got like 40 minutes to get back, but they just realize that they have gone the wrong direction. And here we are. Chapter 30. Where have I heard this before? Once upon a time, in the small town of Hills Village, there lived a girl named Georgia Katadorian. That's me. She lived with her hard-working mother, Jules, her sweet grandmother, Dottie, and her de devious, scheming, dreaming, walking disaster of an older brother, Raffi. I know you've already met Raffi, but that was in his story. This one's mine. And I'll tell you right now, my brother is not the hero of this one. You'll see. So anyway, it all started when our mother texted both of us at school one day. And so here's the text message she sends them. I'll read it out loud. Hey kids, I need a favor. Can one of you stop by the diner after school? Rafi says, wish I could mom, but I have a ton of homework. Georgia says, I can do it. Thanks Georgia Peach and Rafi. I'm glad you're doing your homework. He says, it's the least I can do. She says, you can say that again. Mom says, no fighting you two. Georgia, I'll see you at three. So that's their text message. Mom worked at Swifty's Diner, which served some of the best food this side of the planet. When I showed up after school, she handed me a huge bag of cheeseburgers, fries, and Swifty's signature apple pie. I want you to take this to your grandma, who was sick at the woods, Mom told me. Bert and Marjorie Wood were Grandma Dottie's good friends, and she was house-sitting for them while they went on vacation. But now she'd come down with a bad cold, and Mom said she could use some company. No sweat, I said. In fact, I was happy to do it for two reasons. One, I love hanging with Grandma Dottie. She's crazy, in a good way, and belongs in the awesome Grandma Hall of Fame. And two, I loved how jealous Raffi was going to be when he found out what he'd missed. My brother likes burgers and pie the way most people like water and oxygen. Stay warm out there, you two, Mom said. It's chilly today. She reached out and zipped my favorite red hoodie right up to my chin. I want you to go straight to the woods. No stopping along the way and no talking to strangers. Sure thing, Mom, I said, which was easier than telling her for the hundredth time that I'm not a little kid anymore. I can take care of myself. And besides, I really did plan on getting there ASAP. I mean, who likes cold cheeseburgers? But you know what they say. Sometimes life gets in the way. And other times, it's your devious, scheming, dreaming, walking disaster of an older brother who gets in the way. And this was one of those times. See if I can turn this page here. Chapter 31. Who's afraid of the big bad Raffi? So there I was walking, taking a shortcut through City Hall Park on my way to the woods when I got blindsided by the master of disaster himself, also known as Raffi. He came hurtling around the big fountain in the park, riding a skateboard and wearing his headphones until smash! He plowed right into me like a runaway train. Raffi, I yelled. Why don't you watch where you're going? He couldn't even hear me. He still had his stupid headphones on. I can't hear you. I had my headphones on, he yelled. See? I pulled one earphone away and I shouted, I said, watch where you're going. Then I let it snap back into place. Ouch, he said, and finally slid them off. Doing your homework, huh? I asked. I'm just on my way to the library, he told me. Yeah, right. And I'm on my way to the Indy 500. I knew the whole homework excuse had to have been a fake. My brother's basically allergic to responsibility. I wouldn't trust him if my life depended on it. But he wasn't listening anymore anyway. He was staring at that old goodie bag in my hands. His eyes got real big, his nose was twitching, and if I weren't mistaken, he had started to drool. What's that, he asked. Do I smell apple pie and burgers? It doesn't matter, I said. It's not for you. It's for me and Grandma. She's sick at the woods. Well, hold on, Raffi told me. You don't have to carry that big heavy bag all by yourself. Nice try, I told him, and started moving again. Hey, that's a really nice hoodie, Raffi said. 
walking alongside me. Have I ever told you how nice you look in red? And have I ever told you how obvious you are? I said, buzz off, Rafi. Wait, he tried one more time. Don't you think Grandma would like some flowers? Then he pointed over at Frida's florist next to the park. I, I bet you could get her something nice over there. For once in his life, my brother had good points. Grandma loves flowers. They'd make her feel even better than the cheeseburger. Yeah, okay, I said, but you're chipping in too. I looked down to see how much money was in my pocket. What kind of cash do you have on you? And the only answer I got that time was the sound of skateboard wheels rolling off into the distance, which was absolutely typical. Whenever it's time to pay, all my brother wants to do is play. But you know what? I didn't even care. At least it meant that Rafi was out of my hair for the rest of the day. Or at least I thought. Last chapter for tonight. Knock, knock. Who's there? Chapter 32. When I finally got to the woods house, the front door was locked, so I rang the bell. Who is it? said a voice on the other side of the door. It was a strange voice, a kind of grandma-like voice, but also mostly not. Hi, Grandma. It's Georgia. I called out. I brought you a, a bag of goodies from Swifties. Oh, dear, the voice said, followed by a bunch of fake coughing, <laughs> with lots of fake <laughs> phlegm mixed in. I don't, want to, I don't want to give you my germs, you sweet child. Just leave the food outside, and I'll come get it once you're gone. Oh, please. Grandma, what a deep voice you have, I said. It must be your cold. The better to keep you at a distance, my dear, said Grandma. And by Grandma, of course, I meant Raffi, who was just smart enough to think up a scheme like this and just dumb enough to think I'd fall for it. He hadn't even bothered to keep the real Grandma out of sight. I could see her through the one side of the window, wearing Raffi's headphones and bopping on the couch to whatever music he had turned up loud for her. Oh, and Grandma, I said, what big lies you have. Did you say eyes, dear? Close enough, I called through the door. Well, okay then, I'll just leave the food out here and be on my way. Bye, Grandma. But of course, I wasn't going anywhere. You already knew that, right? See, I'd spent my life watching Raffi try to get away with one stupid thing after another, and I knew how his mind worked, which also meant that I knew exactly what to do next, or, as my brother might have put it, Operation Snare Wolf was just about to begin. Okay, y'all. Take care. That's enough for tonight. I will see you again tomorrow.